Hey everyone, welcome back to Voice in the Desert. My name is Jason. I know it's been a while since I uploaded, but I've been pretty busy here. Uh, well, probably not really busy. I'm just somewhat lazy and I just was not having the heart breaking mood to come and make videos about how Congress and uh, the President aren't doing exactly everything what they said they would, but how it's okay. But I didn't really want to talk about it and how depressing things were, so I just didn't upload, right? But I'm here today with my boy Monkey. Uh, he's conservative as well. Say what's up. What's up, guys? Uh, we're going to be chilling here. We're just going to talk about some things that have been going on recently. And just to start off, I want to start off the conversation with uh, the firing of James Comey. What do you think? Um, I think he just kind of did it at an, an opportune time, um, considering the fact that he's kind of under fire enough as it is and then just kind of doing that kind of made him seem like i don't know guilty guilty like yeah he did something wrong um but that's just my opinion yeah that i mean i dislike comey a lot i mean i suppose not a lot i guess i don't really know that much about comey but he just didn't do some things and he just did some things that didn't need to be done recently and I just didn't agree with it. Like, he had the Clinton uh, email thing going as a case for a while, and then he stopped it, saying that there was no evidence, even though I've heard in multiple interviews of Hillary Clinton that there were actually some classified documents on it. That they found some, even though that she had lied and said that there weren't. And there was no further looking into that until the last few days of the campaign, then they've reopened the case. Somehow turned up nothing, even though multiple other people have said that they've found something. I suppose that was just a bit of a rant, but <laughs> either way, point is, it wasn't an opportune time. Could have done it, you know, a while ago before all this started. Got someone in there who might actually do something. Sure, he's done a lot, but someone who he thinks will do something instead of waiting until he's under fire from everyone. And this just basically raises suspicions. Okay, so on to another topic, guys. Uh, I just want to bring up the healthcare bill real quick. It's still not passed through yet. Um, I haven't read it, the whole uh, platform about it yet. But I remember seeing uh, Ryan's, uh, Paul Ryan's uh, original idea for it and how it was basically Obamacare light is what all of the other conservatives in the House and the Senate called it, um, which is why obviously it didn't pass. And then there was Mo Brooks' one-liner to try to repeal Obamacare, which I think is great, but I just don't see what's so hard right now about getting this bill passed. We have the majority in the House, the Senate, and we have the presidency. And we have a majority uh, in, there are more conservatives on the, in the Supreme Court than there are liberals. We have everything. There's no reason we shouldn't be getting this passed. But it's that hard. <laughs> if the conservatives in the House and the Senate are really for this, are really for having a new health care plan that isn't Obamacare, we just need to repeal it have all of the states do it themselves. That's what conservatism is at the core, less government. What do you think, Monkey? Um, I'm probably not gonna have much input on this because I haven't done much research on it at this point, but um, I do think it needs to be taken care of probably as soon as possible so people can get their health care because, you know, people do need health care and people have problems that <clears throat> they need to, uh, you know, go to Dr. for and not have to pay for all this. But, I mean, the faster we can take care of it, most likely the better. Yeah, I mean, Obamacare has worked for a lot of people and it's worked great. But the Democratic Party, I mean, I'm just, I'm just drawing straight from them, is all about inclusiveness. 
Oh, what about the people who it didn't work for? They're all about minorities, but they're never for the minorities when it hurts them. I mean, it, well, we just have to be it, real. What it kind of ended up doing was it covered a lot of people, but their deductible was like 5000 or more. And your deductible is about $5,000 or more. You're not, it's not going to do too much for you. They call it the Affordable Care Act, but when it's 5000 or more, it's not that affordable. Definitely not. I mean, yeah, yay, everybody's covered. But what are you going to do with that when... When it fails. You can't do anything with it. Yeah, and that's the problem. See, uh, Wisconsin used to have a great, uh, a great healthcare plan before Obamacare got into it, and a lot of people loved it. But then as soon as Obamacare came, it got rid of all other, uh, competition. It basically got rid of the free market for healthcare, is, when I, is how I'm seeing this. And what we need to do my honest opinion is we need to repeal Obamacare and just let the states decide what they're going to do with it. Because nothing is going to get done if we try to come up with more and more government-owned programs. Because that's not the conservative basis. We're winning this fight. Yeah. The more that the states can get done by themselves, the better. If the states themselves can find a... can make a healthcare program that suits the people in their particular um, state and their particular situation, then that would be better than a one-size, kind of a one-size-fits-all kind of situation. Um, Yeah, that makes sense, and I don't know, it just kind of seems to make sense that the states know what's going on with their people and not necessarily the federal government in all cases. So, my honest opinion, the states should take care of it, and if they can't take care of it, that's the point of the free market, is to create... Uh, more competition and to be able to have that competition that uh, makes some economy grow. Some other news, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is possibly going to be running for in the next president, is probably going to be running in the next presidential election. That was super hard for me to say. Um, but apparently he's a registered Republican, or as some reports would say he is. But uh, he's been urged on by many in Hollywood, such as uh, Michael Moore. <clears throat> I had trouble saying that. I didn't really want to. He's <laughs> friends with Hillary Clinton, or just the Clintons. And, uh, well, that's not what I meant to do. But Clinton, Obama, apparently has friends on both sides of the aisle. But I don't know how you can after being friends with Clinton. Uh... But he's a registered Republican. He's been urged on by Michael Moore many of, and many other people to run as a Democrat. Because in Michael Moore's own words, there needs to be more Democrats. There are Hollywood actors. Why doesn't Tom Hanks run? Why doesn't Oprah run? Blah, blah, blah. We need more people who are actually loved by the people. Shut up. Shut up, Moore. What do you think? I mean, I think now that they're pretty much taking the election as a joke just because someone, they think that since someone with very little um, experience can get it, that now anybody can pretty much get it, so they're more or less taking it as a joke and less as a serious. Yeah, I mean, it's like as soon as we start electing people that aren't popular based on their issues, but are popular based on their work, not like any dem or politi political work, just based on movies I or anything. That's the only reason they're voted for. I That's a problem. Sense. But yeah. That's just the way I see it. If we're going to be voting for people just because we like their movies or their acting, or because we think they did good in Fast and Furious 7, um, I then why do we even have presidents if they're just going to be 
just non-experienced people that don't take their job seriously. Exactly. I mean, I can appreciate that, like, there are some non-experienced people who are radical about their ideas or willing to go get them. But Wayne Johnson just hasn't had any experience with it whatsoever, as far and as I know. He hasn't really been, or as, yeah, as far as I know, I don't think he's really been in business. I don't think he's really been in uh, foreign relations or anything that's really important in America. I mean, it's not, I don't know, it's like, the only kind of checkbook that he's counting for is his own in a lot of cases, and it just, Trump had to deal with, uh, deal with his business, he has, he's had to deal with his own, he's had to take care of people, he's had to do it for almost his entire life. It, it just seems to work out. But as far as I know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has only had to account for himself. On another note, uh, DNC Chair Tom Perez is... Uh, was actually joining the protesters who were uh, defending James Comey at the White House. Uh, let's see, when was this? Uh, May 10th. Um, during the investigation, he went out there, or, well, after he was fired, I guess, or while they were defending him, um, they went out and they were protesting, and instead of trying to come up with a health care bill that works for everyone, instead of coming up with bills that will actually work for the country, he's there. Probably working up some sort of other bill, considering that he's uh, on the clock, but he's not actually working on it. What do you think? If you're going to be on the job, if you're going to be working as a... One official, of the most powerful people in the world. If you're going to be working as an official in the free world, and you do actually have the ability to solve the problems in your country, then you should take that extremely seriously and um, do your job instead of doing something that just has nothing to do with your job. You're supposed to, at this point right now, probably you're supposed to be making a better substitute for Obamacare because Obamacare didn't work. So we're supposed probably supposed to be working on something that's going to replace that and this is going to be the Um but you're not taking your job seriously and you're out protesting. So probably not a, a a good not a good thing to be doing. I mean, I, I support the guy's right to protest, but I also support the guy's right to support us, we the people. And, I mean, quite frankly, if he's out on the streets protesting something that has absolutely nothing to do with him. I mean, <laughs> protests always make me wonder, how how little, little of these liberals have jobs? It seems like they're I mean always out protesting. If you have time to go out and protest, um, you know. You, you probably you don't need to protest if you're making good money at a job since you can leave whenever you want to. I mean, <laughs> they ever, whenever they protest some, like, important work kind of type deal thing and they don't like it, it's like it, if you have time to go out to the go out of your job and go out of your way to go protest something. I think you're on a pretty good basis with the people up top. Not the good person up top. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. If more people had jobs and actually had themselves busy working and trying to make themselves successful, then we would have less people going out in the street stopping traffic, which, and then burning stores, destroying storefronts, and things like that, which just pretty much plays and slowing down the economy somewhat, because, um, it just slows things down a lot, and if you have time to go out and protest, 
for days on end in the streets, then you, you need to do something with your life. See, at that point when you can do that, it's no longer the bills that are passed or what the president is doing that's the problem with you not making money. The problem is that you're not actually working and that you're protesting instead. It's plain and simple. You want more money? Go out and work. On another note, speaking of uh, not doing your work, an L.A. school district declared all campuses uh, sanctuary schools. So instead of educating, instead of being educated, let's go around and make them all sanctuary schools so that we can feed at McDonald's to every illegal that comes across the border. What do you think? I really have no input on this, um, on this topic. I, I haven't done any research on it. I don't know exactly what's going on, so I'm not going to put my my input in until I correctly research it and know what's going on. So I think let me this one. let me just uh, read this one thing real quick uh, in the article that I'm actually reading this from. The LA USD, which is Los Angeles Unified School Board, passed a res resolution Tuesday declaring all school sanctuaries for any alien students and their families. Um. Even criminal aliens who might be facing deportation. D we no. Okay. <sighs> Deep breath. You're a bunch of idiots. Okay, if they're criminals, do they really need to be in the country? And do you really want them to bring want to bring them into your schools? Your entire argument has been Trump's making America no longer safe. Do you maybe think it's because you're inviting the illegal aliens who are possibly criminals into your school? Anyways. Another note. Um, There's just absolutely no sense in that whatsoever. Exactly. It's just hard for me to wrap my head around why some people do things. But, um, bringing up the topic again a while ago of celebrities, uh, Running for presidential, running for president, uh, Caitlyn Jenner might uh, look into running for office to bring GOP around on LGBT issues. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, you can't get through that without me laughing. Um, <laughs> I could barely get through that without laughing. What do you think about it? I want to get <laughs> your input first before I start to rant. Take up the entire time. Um, that. I mean, first of all, no, again, no experience whatsoever in running a company. The only reason you're known is because you're a well known Olympic runner and. Let me restart, because I know I lagged out. Um, the only reason you're known in this country is because you are a transgender that went from a man. To a woman, which I don't quite understand that, but that's uh, another argument for another time. Um, but if you are only going into office for one reason, and one reason only, and that is to make the GOP more knowledgeable about the, about the problems of the LGBT crowd and you are not going in for the right reason. You need to be going in for the reasons of trying to keep the rights of the common people and making sure people actually have the resources to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. My turn to rant. Proceed. Okay. So first of all, just to start it off, no. <laughs> okay, no. Yeah, I'm. This person is like one of the most controversial person in like the history of ever. Okay, went from a man who won or was an Olympic runner, did very well in the Olympics, was a big dude. Want to be a woman. Got to change. And then a few months later, 
decided I want to be a man again, and now was going back to I'm happy as a woman. There is something wrong. You're not the person to be leading the country right now. We have enough turmoil. Um, BBC, she announced this with the host, Victoria Derbyshire. Um, she, this was when she said it. She was going to run for an office to promote LGBT issues from within the Republican Party. Literally everything that Jenner stands for is the complete opposite of the Republican platform. Just everything about it. On the same topic of uh, running for president, Elizabeth Warren has announced that I'm not running for president. Which is great. I didn't like Elizabeth Warren. Liberal. Cold-hearted liberal. That's how I see it. Maybe not necessarily cold-hearted, but uh... How can I say this? I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't like liberals. Ah, but in an interview with Bloomberg this week, Progressive, which is basically just a uh, liberal, I'm just gonna say liberal, Senator Elizabeth Warren said, I'm not running for president. Which is great. I dislike Elizabeth Warren. That'd be like if I were to hear Bill Clinton say he was running for president again. First of all, probably bust something, and second of all, I'd realize that that's actually a physical impossibility. Because you can only have two terms. Have any thoughts on this monkey? Um... Not necessarily. Just the fact that good thing we don't have a another liberal running for president um, since she decided to back out. I think is a, is a good thing. But, it's just a lie. I don't that matters. That's all I have to say about that. Makes sense. My teacher always says, uh, hard saying, not knowing. The next topic, uh, which is along the same thing, uh, as before I start talking about Elizabeth Warren, transgender cadets can graduate from military academies but not serve. I cannot tell you how happy I am about this. I've heard about many times about how instead of putting ammo and food and rations inside of trucks for the soldiers, they've had to put in hormones for the transgender so that they keep their manliness. This is a pretty big no-brainer to me, but inclusiveness, am I right? Inclusiveness even if it means we get killed. What do you think? Um, with my cousin being in the room, um, I would probably be quite enraged if I heard that, that happened to him, that instead of having, you know, the necessities like food and ammo and other things, um, going out to them, like, make sure they survive because they're out there serving our country, they are being in there that aren't necessarily needed. They are simply put in there to show that, hey, we love everyone. Um, and it's definitely not what's supposed to be happening, considering the fact that the military is out there to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to protect the rights of the people, and not just the American people, the people of the world, as we have taken over that job too. But, um, just the simple fact that we are doing that, instead of putting in, um, you know, the logical thing, does not make sense. Yeah, I mean... Edgy subject. Edgy. I will support the transgender person. I will support the person, but I will not support what they do. I'm going to be loving in everything that I do and not take it too far. But I'm not going to support them doing things that might endanger our people. People overseas, our people here, anything. That was quick On another topic, uh, Donald Trump had threatened to cancel... Uh, 
press briefings, which are uh, actually led by Sean Spicer, uh, as we know. There have been a lot of things that have been going on with Sean Spicer before that uh, he's apologized for. They said things that weren't necessarily good to say and kind of gave a bad name to some things. But um, in a response, or in a tweet, uh, Trump said, as a very active president with lots of things happening, it is not impossible for my surrogates uh, to stand at a podi at podium with perfect accuracy. He said, maybe the best thing to do would be to cancel all future press briefings and hand out ri written responses for the sake of accuracy. What was this enraged all the liberals? We have the right to know. Him, 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 him. I'm entitled to everything. Shut up. Okay. This is just <sighs> since uh, everybody has different uh, opinions, and uh, Sean Spicer is uh, usually pretty good with his words, and is usually good at uh, being politically correct. Um, I th think that he's doing a. He has been doing a pretty good job. Nah. Uh, well, if you have such a right to know, then feel free to email the president or write him a letter, since I know that presidents have done so before. And actually, I read about one time about how President Ronald Reagan uh, message or sent a letter to a person who'd gotten like a world record on Pac-Man or something, <laughs> which was which is amazing. So go ahead and email if you really need something. Why should we dress you? not like you're outlining the good things that happen in the media, you're outlining the bad things. It's your job. Your job is to make things look hopeless and to show that there's something wrong and then come up with answers to draw in more views. Ingenious. Showbiz sometimes, am I right? What do you think? Um... I think he has more than one reason to kind of cancel these, uh, these press conferences, and honestly, I don't blame him one bit for that, just because in, in the last, you know, 100 days, and even before that, even before um, he was elected into office, the press gave him a lot and a lot of trouble um, taking things he had said out of context and kind of distorting things he said to better state what their goals are. So, I think the first reason he did it, yeah, is accurate. He did it for that reason too, but, um, the main thing is probably the fact that he just put them in the press. So I, I most likely would be in the house in that, uh, in that boat. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it just reminds me one of the possible reasons for getting rid of it. Why I would personally want to get rid of the press briefings is uh, in the campaign when. Uh, asked a question about uh, whether or not um, what the punishment would be for uh, for uh, enforcing illegal abortions, what the punishment would be, or if he would punish. And he said yes, there would definitely have to be severe punishments. That was taken out of context, nobody watched the full thing. And it was taken out of context to make it seem like I, sh I will punish women for having abortions, when in, in reality they were talking about what if it was illegal. Nobody's going to bring that up, though. Except for Breitbart. This next one should uh, be of particular interest to Monkey, since uh, this is his homeland. Motherland, as people in Russia would call it. Well, uh, mother okay. <laughs> Texas was named for the 13th consecutive year the best state for business. What do you think about that? I want, I want to hear what you think about this. Honestly, I think that it is a very, very accurate statement. The diversity of businesses that we have down here in Texas is extremely crazy. You can drive from city to city here and just see the amount of different 
business opportunities that are to be had here in the great state of Texas. There's everything from oil to, um, you know, fishing to being a doctor to, you know, doing some kind of physical labor. There's anything that you could probably dream about doing, you can do. I mean, there's so many different parts of Texas. Um, there is, you know, parts with cities, there's parts with just country and brush. So no matter what you want to do, you could probably do it in Texas. And I, I just think that is a great thing that my state has been named. And I mean, that the, the, the place is the year. biggest state here around, except for Alaska, but the thing is just open, openness. You can fit a lot of jobs in there. They say everything's bigger in Texas. Well, apparently so is business. Alright, so on to some more unhappy waters. Maxine no. Waters off of MSNBC. <laughs> Are you expecting anything else on this channel? This thing is the oh, happiness. Oh, no, that was a good one. That was a good one. I... That was that was a good one. Okay, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> but uh, Maxine Waters, off of MSNBC, liberal, said we are fiddling while Rome is being while Rome is burning. Trump needs to be impeached. Huh. That's funny that you say that. Uh, I don't think, I don't think, uh, Obama did anything to stop any of this. Let's see, what did he stop burning? Well, it wasn't the flag. Uh. Hmm. Probably, let's see, what did he stop bur from burning? Let's see. Oh, 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 yeah, the Democratic Party. That's about it. Yeah, that kind of cries from burn, too. Yeah, I was trying to find something positive for the guy. I mean, he's president. Was president. Must but, always um, find the best in everybody, bud. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it's hard, but I'm gonna find something about, about Obama. Let's see. Trump needs to be impeached. It's been, like, just over 100 days. Oh, <laughs> Magazine Waters was saying the circumstances are such that he's in the middle of an investigation and he gets fired. It appears that this president has admitted that he inter interfered with the investigation by asking him if, in fact, he was under investigation. I don't know. First of all, I just want to say, I don't know how that's interfering. You asked the question. You know, you people are reporters. They do that all the time. They're not known as uh, interfering with the, with the story. Gosh, so I don't think, or quote, so I don't think that, uh, that's hypocritical at all. Hypo hypocrisy lies with this president. This man lies every day. He changes his story. He doesn't even realize that most people don't believe him anymore. I, let's see, there's a, oh man, there's someone that just reminds me of that. Oh, who is it? Oh, Hillary Clinton. Literally, I watched, I heard an interview where Clinton was questioned with like seven or eight questions about the email was, was there classified information? Simple yes, no question. No, there wasn't. I, finds out there was some classified information. Hey, did you use this at home? Privately? How many people knew about it? Did anyone know about it? Did you make this person aware of it? No, I didn't. Reports find out that yes, she did tell someone. Stories contradict. Lie after lie after lie. My favorite one of all time from Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> about, you know, Donald Trump needs to be impeached, um, because, of course, he's only had 100 days, he hasn't even had a chance to finish 
or not the fetish, to fix anything yet, just for the simple fact that he hasn't had time for the next conference he's doing it, just exactly the opposite of what Donald wants to do. But, um, just, people, the amount of people that didn't believe, because he said the thing about people don't really believe him anymore. Um, the amount of people that didn't believe Hillary was a much greater number than the amount of people that don't believe Trump. Now, I mean, of course, everybody will say contradictory stories because, of course, we are human, definitely not perfect, but that does not make up to the fact that Hillary just said some highly questionable things. Um, but, um, that is just my, my view without it. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> had Hillary Clinton not gotten as much as Trump has gotten done now, would Maxine Waters call for her impeachment? We have the majority no. in everything. No. In order for her to get things passed, she would have to sign executive orders, which, uh, Everybody's criticizing Trump for. Didn't criticize FDR for, uh, or a lot of people probably didn't criticize FDR for just signing executive orders. Didn't criticize, uh, um, what's his name, Obama's, uh, Cuban travel ban. Nobody criticizes that, but as soon as a white Republican male does so, that's when it becomes a problem. Like I mean, the, uh, people the in Congress need to hike up their skirts and realize that it's bigger than politics now. It's the American people. Didn't you know that if you're a, a white heterosexual male, then you are oppressing like everybody? <laughs> exactly. I'm just joking. You're, you're like oppressing everybody. Those are two things. If you are white, uh, that's, that's male. That's three That's three things, bud. It's like... You're not looking for the good of anyone else but yourself. It's just what the message is sent about white heterosexual males. You're going straight to hell, buddy. If you're a white heterosexual male, you are going to hell. <laughs> Clearly. Mm -hmm. Based on liberal input, you're going to die a slow and horrible death for being born with your skin. All the people will ask, why are we being seen as hated the black people why are we being seen as hated for our skin gee I was thinking the exact same thing you don't ever protest for the Native Americans who Andrew Jackson killed many 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 uh, what's his name Abraham Lincoln also killed a lot but as soon as you're a white male or you're black then you're either super oppressive or you're constantly oppressed that's going to end off today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, this conservative input uh, from uh, my buddy Monkey and I. Uh, I want to do more videos with Monkey because he's a real conservative person. He's just uh, actually just all around knowledgeable and deep thinker. But I hope that we do some more videos together. And I hope I do some more videos with a lot of my other friends later. But uh, that's going to be it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like if you want. If you new to the channel feel free to subscribe because it uh, really brings a smile to my face every time I see 11 instead of 10 and, uh, I'll talk to you guys next week